It was a long time in the making, but the Reading Royals have earned the Kelly Cup for the 2012-13 season. As a result, the team members and many of their fans take a few hours to celebrate. We'll check out the parade, look back on Reading's season, and talk with some of the people who made it happen. That's all right now on ECHL Week. ECHL Week comes to you this week from Reading, Pennsylvania in the Suburb Center where the Reading Royals and their loyal fans are celebrating the 2013 Kelly Cup Championship. There was a parade outside, there's a party inside. Let's see what happens. It took 12 seasons of ups and downs, highs and lows, elation and heartache but the Reading Royals have finally won the Kelly Cup for the first time. And when you win the ECHL championship, that gives you the opportunity to celebrate a little bit. That's what the Royals did. On a very warm springtime afternoon, all the members of the purple and black, both those who wear uniforms and those who don't, capped off their record-setting season with a victory parade and celebration at their home rink, the Sovereign Center in Reading. The parade kicked off at a shopping center parking lot a couple miles away from the arena in neighboring Wyomissing, and then traveled down Penn Street to the Sovereign Center. The parade route was lined with thousands of cheering fans anxious to celebrate the team's first championship. A Reading Fire Department ladder truck, one of the arena's Zambonis, and a couple of four-wheelers for the mascots provided the special transportation. There was also a flatbed truck with the traditional crushed car, along with fire and police escort vehicles to round out the spectacle. The Royals were happy to show off their hard-earned hardware that included the EA Bud Ginger Memorial Trophy, which they earned for winning the Eastern Conference Championship. The Kelly Cup Playoffs Most Valuable Player Trophy, which was awarded to Reading goaltender Riley Gill. And of course, there was one other trophy that everyone wanted to see and touch and have their picture taken with, the Patrick J. Kelly Cup which in 17 seasons has become very well recognized by both folks affiliated with the ECHL as well as hockey fans in general. And on this day, many people in Reading, a city of about 90,000, and in Berks County, which is home to about 415,000 folks, knew about the Cup. Well over 3,500 fans took part in the championship celebration inside the Sovereign Center, First were introductions of all the team staff and area elected officials and a video highlight presentation. Then, all of the players, including David Marshall, the third leading scorer on the team during the regular season, who didn't play in the playoffs as a result of his call up to the American Hockey League, took a moment or two to address everyone in attendance. All the players signed autographs and took photographs with fans for well over an hour after the speeches were done. It wasn't nearly enough that Reading had a club record 99-point regular season and was the top-seeded Eastern Conference team entering the playoffs. The Royals had to work their way through a 4-1 series victory over Greenville which included a few games during which goaltender Gill was unable to play. They then persevered in a seven-game battle which eliminated the defending Kelly Cup champion, Florida Everblades. 
Reading pressed on through a five-game nail-biter of a series against Cincinnati, in which four of the games were decided by a single goal, and three of those went to overtime. And to cap it off, the five-game final series win over Stockton, which included one of the most memorable games in Kelly Cup Finals history. That game, Game 1, featured six goals in the final 14 minutes of the third period, three by each team, and had both teams scoring in the final minute to set up an overtime which made a hero of Reading's Nikita Kaczyrski, who scored the game winner. Coming up, we go inside to take a look at Reading's celebration party and hear from some of the people who contributed to the Royals title. That's next on ECHL Week. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. It's hard to believe that Reading started the regular season 1-5-1, but once October ended and November began, the Royals seemed to get the hang of a new system being shared by NHL affiliate Washington. Reading never lost more than two straight games in regulation time the rest of the season. General Manager Mark Wallace, who joined the team in 2007 and has been in his current position for three seasons, handled many of the team introductions during the day's festivities. Talk about what winning the Kelly Cup means to both this city and this franchise. It's big. I mean, it's, it's beyond big if you can do that. Um, you know, for our city, uh, our city has faced some difficult times over the past few years. And, you know, the way we draw here in Reading, you know, averaging over 4,000 a game, it's a tribute to our, to our hockey fans. And in the playoffs, uh, you know, we had some great draws, especially for the Kelly Cup round. And I think what it's done, it's also helped build uh, a new breed of hockey fan because the words on the street and when we just had this parade and uh, you know you could see we had about 3,500 people here tonight for a, for a celebration we had another couple thousand out in the streets or, you know lining the streets for the parade so it was a lot of fun and, and it means an awful lot uh, to the city and, and to our organization in the same sense. At the major league level a lot of times championships teams see a bump the next season do you anticipate that kind of thing for, for Reading? I think, I think we'll see that, Barry. I know our season ticket renewal right now is up around 90%, which is outstanding uh, for this time of year. So we're very pleased about that. And the folks that may not be coming back, they may be dropping to a partial plan or they may be moving or something of that nature. So I think our customer service has been exceptional this year. We've gotten a lot better in that area. And I think the biggest way we can improve and improve quickly is reaching back out to the corporations to start purchasing season tickets or start doing the big group outings with us once again. 
again. And, and again, with the excitement that we generated uh, during this past season on the ice and, and some of the neat things that we do to you know have promotions and, and giveaways and things like that, there's a buzz going right now, so we want to capitalize on that. You must be very pleased of the job that Larry Corville and his staff have done in putting this team together, not just this year, but in the last few years they've been getting better and better and had had some trouble in the playoffs, but overall it's been a successful team. You've been in the playoffs a lot, and of course this year it's culminated with a championship. Larry is um, phenomenal as a coach, and you know we hope to keep him for a long time, but Besides what he does with X's and O's on the ice, it's what he does off the ice to recruit players and to bring players here. And you know, we lost some significant talent in the, you know, the the Grubauers and the Comries and the Urbans, and then he quickly replaced them. Uh, you know, with a Riley Gill, with a Mark Matera. You know, Pat Weller coming down certainly helped. Nikita Kashirsky coming in and helping like he did, and, and that's because of Larry. And and Larry's a credible, credible coach in pro sports, I'm not going to say just minor sports, and he will someday get his opportunity, but, but he is building quite a resume for himself, and, and I'm hoping we can keep him here for a long time. And having said that, would you hope, do you think that this is the opportunity for Redding to um, really put itself on the map in terms of uh, the ECHL? It's very difficult to do because there's so much player turnover from year to year, but as far as the on-ice product, could this be the start of something great? I, I think so. I think we've always had a, a good on-ice product here, and, and we kind of sit in a market where there are a lot of American Hockey League teams who are able to take from us because we're only four or five hours from about six or seven teams, and that's a quick commute, you know. And and when you're here in the Northeast as we are and, and you have an American Hockey League team who needs a player and takes them for three games, three weeks, whatever it is, it, it hurts your roster. But but this year I think what kept us together was obviously the affiliation with Washington and Hershey and being able to have those signed players here playing for us. And, uh, you know, there's, there's no question that affiliation certainly helped us in, in regards to having the success that we did. As the clock ticked down in that final game against Stockton, what went through your mind? Um, I was so happy for our fans. You know, uh, you know, a lot of them. Uh, I, I, they understand the sport, and, and I think they've come to understand this particular business at this particular level that you don't necessarily hold on to a player forever. Uh, but but now they've kind of attached themselves to a Tifu, and you heard Mark Thompson say Tifu played every single game that we played this year. I think it was 94 games the guy played in. That's amazing for a hockey player without an injury. Come on, and he plays hard. It's not like he's shying away from stuff. He he plays hard, and so they they've attached to him. There's no doubt about it, and he's kind of become the face of our players. There's no question about that. But I, I really felt good for the fans, and obviously for the players, being around them and seeing what they go. through through and, and the uh, efforts that they put in and you know for some of these guys this may be the highest level that they get to and to win a championship it's tremendous it's something they're going to have forever. You were excited but you were still uh, under control uh -huh. after all those years and all those games and your team won a championship and you were, it seemed like you were uh, very comfortable in accepting that that is, is going to happen. Have you given that a lot of thought in, in preparation leading up to that? Well, I think you do as you go through the playoffs. You, you, you begin to get a feel for the way things are going. So, yeah, there, there is some thought going to it, but I've always uh, kind of gone with just the natural flow of the way I feel in the moment. Uh, you, you probably know, like, in, in the uh, Eastern Conference Finals against Cincinnati at the Game 5, decisive Game 5 there, I had a real difficult time finishing the broadcast that day because it was a very emotional moment for me. We had had several difficult moments at U.S. Bank Arena previously with our club, and to win in Game 5 there at U.S. Bank Arena was really, for whatever reason, I felt the emotion just flow at that particular moment. Uh, yesterday, I think part of it was the score of the game. I'm not going to say that uh, it was dispositive after the second period, but you're up 5 nothing going into the final period, and I think it gave us time to kind of recap mentally what had occurred over the course of the season, and you didn't have the tension of the hockey game itself, and uh, for me personally, I, I wouldn't say that it was anticlimactic to uh, come to a decisive Game 5, but in a weird way, 
it was one of those circumstances where you uh, the emotion had kind of like uh, uh, dissipated a bit over the course of the of the series against Stockton to the point where uh, my my biggest thought was the people who had been around the Royals for a long time and uh, the joy that they would be experiencing as a result of this and ultimately going down and congratulating the players because as you know Barry it's, it's it's all about the players the players go out and they do it I know that you know the support elements that are around the players are important but ultimately the guys that brought home that hardware are the players themselves and, and I'm very proud of the job they did. Zane Collings is regional general manager for SMG, the facilities manager for the Sovereign Center, and co-owner of the franchise, along with the Berks County Convention Center Authority. Well, we started 12 years ago, and we've been through a number of different coaches, but Larry Corver put together a phenomenal team that led us to bring the championship. Uh, for a city like Reading, it, it does mean a lot, and I think the turnout tonight kind of uh, exemplated, if that's even a word, uh, emphasized the uh, the importance of the cup to the town. You know, sometimes minor league hockey, you know, the championship, championship, but not here in Reading. It really meant something. There's probably 4,000 plus people here tonight, and I couldn't tell you how many people are outside for the parade, not only here in Reading, but West Reading, why I'm missing. So, you know, you, you, a lot of heartfelt fans and being in the room with the guys on Saturday night, their determination to get this done. Uh, they were all business, and boy, they can certainly enjoy a championship. Up next, the coach and some of Redding's players have their turn at the microphone as ECHL Week continues. So many reasons to be a fan, so many ways to show it. Customize your own at shop.nhl.com. From opening night until the Kelly Cup is raised, watch every game of the 2012-13 ECHL season exclusively on AmericaOneSports.com. Catch the action live or on demand. Games available on your PC, Mac, or mobile device. The biggest goals, hardest hits, and spectacular saves all season long can be found only at AmericaOneSports.com, the official broadband broadcaster to the ECHL. In one of the most memorable activities of the afternoon, was a performance by goaltender Marco Wuya, who at the request of his teammates, wrapped a tribute to the Royals which featured an imaginative word to rhyme with cup, as in Kelly. Perhaps it wasn't in the best taste, but the fans loved it. Of course, one of the biggest receptions was reserved for Captain Yannick Tifu. Despite spending less than two seasons with Reading, the eight-year pro has become a fan favorite. And why not? He led his team to the ultimate ECHL goal, not to mention that he led the team in scoring during both the regular season and the playoffs. Tifu, who's played with six other ECHL teams as well as a few clubs in the AHL, said right after the conclusion of the playoffs that he intends to return to Reading next season, a fact that Royals fans will no doubt be pleased to hear. To, I even said to the people taking the picture, I was like, are you guys done? I just want to enjoy the moment. And I was just excited, but Mr. Kelly was really nice about it. He's like, you just told me, enjoy the moment. It's a great moment, and you deserve it after all those years. So it was just a quick, you know, uh, shaking a little bit, wanted to get out of there and just go celebrate with my teammate. But, yeah, it was kind of funny a little bit. I kind of, it's blurry a little bit at some point. You know, everything goes so fast. I told, uh, I told uh, Tiffany and my parents after. I told a girlfriend and parents that you know it was kind of a hard time a little bit to just remember and go realize what was going on. I think it's going to kick in maybe in two three days, but it's been a great journey right now. 
everybody says that it, it takes some time and, and it should take time, don't you think? Because you've been working for this, not just this season, but your whole career to get to this point where you can say you are won a professional championship. That That's not something that you can kind of snap your fingers and say, I, I appreciate what's going on here. Oh no, I'm pretty sure. I mean, like I said, we, I talked to Weller a little bit. He's been around for a long time and won a couple. And I talked to Eaton and Cash and you know, it's it's stuff that doesn't kick in the right right away. You know, like the first, the first 30 seconds and uh, when the glove goes up and you're just in the pile, you know, you're just trying to enjoy it, but at the same time, you don't really know what's going on. And then when I raised that cup, you know, it's kind of weird. I don't know how to explain it. It's just, you're, I, I couldn't hear the fan. I couldn't hear nothing. I was just in my own world. And then today when I was walking out of the the, the plane today, I kind of realized a little bit more. I sat back and I said, wow, you know, like what we accomplished as a team is unbelievable. And, you know, it's just right away you don't want, you're not, you're not thinking about nothing else and just what just happened and you want to celebrate be with your your family it's kind of your second family you know you live eight months with those guys so we just wanted to enjoy it as a team and then it was it was a great moment and then goaltender riley gill also received an outstanding ovation from the adoring reading fans the northfield minnesota native posted numbers that are still hard to fathom especially when you consider that during the first four months of the season, the Royals also received excellent goaltending from both Philip Grubauer and Drew McIntyre before they headed to the AHL. After having a stellar season with Louisiana in the Southern Professional League, Gill moved to Reading, where his final regular season and playoff record was a combined 23-7-1. And, and of course, that playoff MVP trophy would look good on anyone's mantle. You know, many call-ups throughout the year that I turned down just because I didn't think it was the right circumstance for me or situation. You know, I wasn't going to get a lot of playing time. And, you know, uh, Redding gave me a great opportunity to come in and play right away. And, you know, I took the, took the horns and ran with it. And, you know, it worked out for me pretty well. Perhaps the largest cheer of the celebration was in honor of the primary architect of the Royals' on-ice performance, head coach Larry Corville. Corville took over the coaching reins midway through a miserable 2008-9 season, and since then, the team has finished every season at least eight games over 500. The former longtime minor league player, who also earned 33 games in the NHL with Vancouver, has coached the Royals in 10 series and 51 playoff games over the past four seasons. This season, he juggled 48 players during the year into a championship lineup. Uh, you know, I've, I won a few championships in, in, in junior hockey and, and with Team Canada and stuff, but never run some at the pro level. And I've been with Reading here for almost 12 years, on and off, as a player and a coach now. And it's special to, to finally do it here, and because I, I spent most of my professional career in the city of Reading, so it, the fans deserve it, these players deserve it, and, and, and very happy that we got we accomplished our, our final goal. Were there any were there any surprises in the final series against Stockton? I don't know. I just uh, I thought they were a really very good team. They worked extremely hard. Uh, they were well coached. Uh, you know, didn't know a lot about that team. You know, going into the series because they all played out west, but we watched the video and uh, you know a couple games kind of went either way, and, and the guys bared down and, and scored a couple more goals than they did. But uh, you know, I want to reward them. Or they, they were a team that also showed a lot of, of pride. They, you know, that, in that one game at home and elimination game for them, the fourth game, they came out and played pretty hard and wanted to give themselves a chance to come back and, and possibly win the series and even that final game when we were up by five you know six nothing um, you know nothing was cheap they were they were uh, well coached and they had you know they were just a team that uh, you know played extremely well for against us have you thought at all about next season <laughs> we're gonna take a little bit of time off to kind of you know take care of my bumps and bruises through the seasons but I really haven't thought about it yet uh, we do have a lot of returning guys from the year coming back next year uh, still got to convince some other guys whether you know one of the fans was talking about tonight about Kurt McDonald whether he'll come back you know I think it's likely that he'll retire and, and probably start coaching somewhere and uh, I definitely talked to him already about coming back there's a bunch of guys that all these guys that are on ECHL contract I'd love to have them back and uh, definitely talk to him about it and, and uh, hopefully they do how about the hunting do you, do you get some of that in 
I, uh, well, I got one day in. I usually go turkey hunting in the month of May, and uh, my dad came down for a couple of weeks. We ended up, uh, once we clinched that Cincy series, we came back, we had one day to go out. So I uh, didn't get lucky, but uh, no, I guess next year will be the big year for me. Anything that you would say to people who have followed Reading for a long time and said, oh, they've never managed to win, they've never gotten this far, what would you say to, to those people now? We just got to keep on trying, uh, keep working. We've always, uh, I think, put a, big, a good product on the ice. We've always tried to win a, a Kelly Cup championship here, and and uh, we finally did it. So uh, if you keep working at it and, and believe in yourself and, and put the effort in, you'll get that opportunity someday. We'll have one more ECHL Week show later in June, during which we'll wrap up the season take a look at what's been going on since the Kelly Cup was awarded, and have a special feature about a couple of former ECHL players who have earned a very big victory. Now, in honor of the Reading Royals and their Kelly Cup championship, let's allow their mascots, Tiara and Slapshot, to conclude today's show. <laughs>